What if I told you that you may not even heard of the most insane story of this entire draft class? What if I also told you that if you're a team looking for their quarterback with the highest potential in the entire draft, that you might be able to get him in the third round? Outside of Kenny Pickett and maybe Malik Willis, I think all the other quarterbacks are not going to be expected to play right away, and maybe not even the whole first season. And teams are still going to spend a first rounder on these guys because that's how important the position is. Teams like the Steelers, the Falcons, the Lions, with their second pick maybe even the commanders but what if you could get this guy in the third and yes we are talking about Carson Strong and to give some backstory to his insane season last year he was told by everyone I'm talking doctors coaches and family members not to play this season I was watching the bootleggers podcast which is an amazing listen and they brought this up and I could not believe this wasn't being talked about more for how serious it was so we had to look into it more so in today's video we're gonna be covering Carson Carson Strong improbable rise and talk about his insane injury that he played through this year and then we're gonna get into his film and talk about his strengths and his potentials but also some of his weaknesses that he's gonna need to fix as he sits the first year to get healthy and learn to become a quarterback one in the NFL and I'm gonna botch the hell out of whatever surgery he had so I'm just gonna put it on screen but he actually had two surgeries because of this knee issue and it's a long slow and painful recovery process a minimum of 20 12 months to get back to your normal everyday life. But Carson was wanting to play full contact Division I football just six months after the surgery with the best athletes in the country. And when everyone told him not to and to take the season off, he went out there essentially on one leg and threw for just under 4,200 yards, 36 touchdowns to only eight interceptions, and completed over 70% of his passes on one leg. But for Carson to even get to this point is insane because the 6'4", 225 pound quarterback has always been overlooked. He had no proper quarterback training in high school and he only received one official division one offer at Nevada. And he was the seventh string on the roster when he stepped foot on campus. He won the starting role and earned everything he had on this team and never looked back. And coming back from an injury can kind of be double edged because on one hand you can look at it as reckless or dumb or you can look at it as a crazy competitor and leader and someone that you would want at the front of your franchise. And he is now training with prolific quarterback coach Jordan Palmer to get ready for the draft, who I'm sure is going to be helping him with all his weaknesses that we are gonna cover in today's film analysis. And actually, let's get into that right now. Let's get into the film. And we're going to start with some of his best attributes. So when we think of potential in the draft, obviously we think about Malik Willis, which is completely fair, but it is unfair to leave Carson Strong off of this list. And just to give some context to these plays, this is in the 2021 season, and he is essentially on one leg six months after a very serious injury. And on this play, we're going to be on the far right hash. And if you're going to look all the way to the top of your screen, that's where the ball's gonna go. And one thing that we need to start off is with his deep ball and his deep ball accuracy. This guy has an absolute cannon for an arm. This is gonna be harder than any NFL throw you're gonna have to make because the hashes are longer and the receiver doesn't do a great job leaving a much room on the sideline. But to put this on a dime, 53 yards down the field completely across the field is where we can start to see the arm talent but we're going to look at some other plays and why people should be much higher on him if we're looking at him as a project player looking to get healthy to bring to your NFL franchise. And since his deep ball and his deep ball accuracy is probably one of his best traits, he is never going to be afraid to let it rip. And once the defense gives it to him, he's going to take it and he's going to exploit them. Again, at the bottom of your screen, the bottom left hash, all the way to the top of your screen, 55 yards down the field. Safety can't get over the top. Insanely accurate. And this is the kind of power that we like to see. And this is what you want to see. These are the tangibles that we see quarterbacks that if we can develop them, if we can get this guy in the third round and watch this throws like these. This is going to be a deep post over the middle of the field probably one of his best throws of the season this is an absolute dot they're in quarters coverage and it's going to absolutely torch this the receiver is just going to outrun it and we are going to get into some of the weaknesses because he played in the mountain west don't worry we're going to talk about all of that but it's hard not to just love the anticipation being able to rip it like on a play like this Again, starting on the far left hash, working all the way back to the bottom of the field. And sure, did the corner do everything right on this? No. But look at the anticipation. He's whining. He's ready to let this rip. The corner's just now getting turned around. I think they're going to play this much better in the NFL. But this is an NFL throw, and it's going to be much harder than any throw he's going to have to make, just the way the hashes are set up in college. 
And this is where it can start to look like a high school mixtape when you just have better receivers. And that is a part of it. And we're going to talk about it. But what can he make the NFL ready throws across the middle of the field? But when we watch his play style, we really have to figure out a certain philosophy because he's not taking deep shots every single time. And sometimes his criticism is he can be too conservative at times. But this is his philosophy. This is what he said in an interview. I compare playing quarterback to boxing. For one, you have to stay loud on your toes. You have to be ready to strike at any time. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't come in throwing haymakers. Yeah. You got to throw jabs. You got to beat the body up. Right. You got to take what they give you. Right. Take what they give you. Take what they give you. Eventually, the defense is going to put their hands down and play cover one. Yeah. And this is exactly why he's been able to have the last two seasons being able to complete over 70% of his passes. But now let's look at some NFL ready throws because that windows in the NFL are much tighter and you're not always going to be able to dink and dunk and then just put it over the top. You're going to have to laser over the middle of the field. And when we look at plays like this to give context to this play this is a third and 20 right here and it doesn't get much better than this he has a decent base kind of drifting to his left we see that a lot in these air raid type offenses windows aren't gonna get any tighter than that in the nfl i mean this is a ridiculous throw and as we see this from another angle from the side here we just see him complete a huge third and 20 it doesn't get much more beautiful than that so if you're looking for one of the most undervalued third round talents, just being able to step up in the pocket, drop absolute lasers, huge arm talent, and this play going through all his progressions, fourth and two, coming across the middle of the field, these are NFL ready throws. And it's not all just about hitting the tight windows. It's I love so much about this play. It's the pocket manipulation, stepping up in the pocket. Because, I mean, he has no mobility right now. He is literally on one leg. Look at how he's releasing this. No weight on that back leg at all because he had a surgery on his right leg. But this is a whole shot throw right in between the corner and the safety. But the accuracy on this to put it on the back shoulder to get this touchdown, to not have his receiver in the hospital or have it incomplete. And then we're going to see a much more simple read where it doesn't look like much on film, but then you really start to break it down. He did it perfectly. And this is where ball placement and accuracy is absolutely everything. We're going to have this middle receiver in the slot just run a simple slant over the middle of the field. And I get it. We've been throwing slant since we were in third grade. But this is the technical stuff that makes you feel like he's going to be NFL ready. Because when he makes this, this could be a few different places. Again, obviously, if it's behind him, it's probably going to be incomplete, maybe even an interception. If it's low, he's just going to catch it right where he's at and just be down. But if he leads him too out far in front, that linebacker is screaming across the middle of the field and that receiver is going to spend a night in the hospital so he puts it right on him he's not going to lead him so he can keep running across the field but it almost lets, lets him so he can catch it and immediately start making his way up the field the linebacker isn't going to be able to get a hand on him not even down in two-hand touch football and they're going to score on this play so the intricacy where this seems like such a simple play it's the little things that matter in the nfl and this is where i think he started to excel later in his career and the best look at a college quarterback from a smaller school that we can get a good look at is in the red zone. So I don't even necessarily know whether to put this in the pros and cons column, but he has almost mastered the fade in the red zone. Let's take a look at a few of those. And I would have liked to see more examples on tape where he was making these really tight window throws in the red zone. But if you're this good at doing a shoulder back shoulder fade, and he had all different angles. This one, he just kind of ropes it in there, but he does everything. He lets his receivers go up and get it. And every time they got within the 10 yard line, especially with inside the five, this is what they were going to. And Carson Strong was so good at throwing it. And him and his receivers just had a connection that made him let him go up and get plays. And yes, this is SDSU. This is my alum showing back to back plays of our players getting moss. So you know how confident I am in this guy. I would not be giving him praise against my alum if I didn't think so I don't know whether to put this in the pros or cons column obviously it's a pro because it's huge but I really wish I would have liked to see more tape on him making these really tight window throws with anticipation in the red zone because that's probably the best look we can get and now let's start to talk about some of his weaknesses. So one, he did play in the Mountain West. He was playing against lesser talent, and this led to a lot of down the field open throws. What we saw earlier with the arm talent, but this is his receivers just simply beating the corners one on one. And that's not going to happen all the time in the NFL. The margin for error and the amount of times this is going to happen is going to be a lot less. That's why I said sometimes it started to look like a high school mixtape or when we see like Alabama or Ohio State with their speedster receivers going up against 
against lesser talent, but it was the case for Nevada in the Mountain West this past two seasons. And also, it was really hard to find tape where he wasn't in a super clean pocket. The Nevada offensive line, all the props to them, or this is just all the Mountain West defense being bad. But the one thing I saw is he would really stare down his receivers. And this is kind of unintentional consequences against playing against lesser talent because your first read is usually going to be there. So a lot of it happens pre-snap, but it can bite you in the butt on a play like this where we have the one high safety. He's going to be covering the whole, I mean, everything in the back of the field. And so we're going to have this again. We're going to have a far left hash almost all the way to the top. This is where he excelled at so much, but he stares it down so much that this safety is able to make a play on it. This cow secondary got torched all game long. And for someone on the opposite hash to go ahead and make a play just because he's reading your eyes. I mean, we have something at the bottom of your screen here. It's not like there's no vertical threat at the bottom of your screen, but he stares it down so much, leaves it a little bit short. And this is something that really worries me because it didn't impact him that much because he was playing against lesser talent. But having a backside safety, being able to make this play, I mean, you just made his job so, so easy. And in the NFL, that's really going to cost you huge. And this is another example of him staring down his receivers, but where we really got to see the lack of mobility. Since we had a clean pocket, we didn't see him have to scramble too much in these situations. But right here on a play like this, this should have been a pick and it also should have been a lot more than that in the other direction. It should have been a very good play. So he ends up staring down his receiver at the bottom of your screen corner just drops it but watch this this is where what should have happened if he's looking if he has confidence in his mobility right now this defender's falling down right now he needs to be able to step up in the pocket and attack the line and this is what we see quarterbacks like Kyler Murray uh, Patrick Mahomes Josh Allen Justin Herbert because he is going to be coming over here uh, this receiver is going to be clearing out this and then he's just going to be sitting right here so this is the guy we are going to be picking on on this play if you can attack the line of scrimmage you're going to put this guy in a really difficult spot because as you're talking the line there uh, this guy is going to probably come up and try and make a stop on it but now he has to decide and this is where Carson Strong is going to have an option wherever this guy goes if he commits to this we're going to have this over the top so more than likely he's going to have to drop back on him and then we just hit this in the flats and it's going to be a much bigger gain but it's the lack of mobility that he had because of his injury but we would like really like to see him progress get off his first read not make this throw in the first place and if you are going to make this throw don't don't stare it down so the safety can come down and make a play on it. But ending the film session on a more positive manner before we wrap things up, when I talk about unintentional consequences of playing against lesser competition and getting in a bad habit of staring down your receivers, the unintentional consequence of having an injury is you aren't going to be able to be all that mobile. So being able to be a lot better at pocket manipulation, we saw this from his 2020 season to his 2021, he's not going to take off and run like he was before. He knows he has to stay in there in the pocket, and I feel like this is going to be a huge attribute. So instead of taking off, trying to scramble, do all of this he's just going to make this little adjustment do enough to get out of the way and then reset his feet and fire it down the field this is exactly what i've been wanting to see but what can we take away from this film analysis so at the end of the day i'm a lot higher now on carson strong once i started looking at him than a lot of people are in general and having him as a third round evaluation i think that puts him more valuable than someone like a sam howell or maybe even a desmond ritter who you aren't going to be playing on playing but you're probably still going to have to use the first round draft pack pick if you want to get them so getting this guy in the third round having insane amount of uh, high percentage completion having the body frame having the deep ball accuracy getting healthy and being a leader on your team i loved every single interview i saw with him i think this could be a huge scoop up especially a team like the lions i know they do, they're probably not going to go quarterback at two and if they're thinking about going quarterback at 32 they could get another first round guy and get their quarterback one of the future and if it doesn't hit i am more than okay than using a third round pick to try and figure this out because we are set with Jared Goff at the beginning of the season. So I really do like this pick for a couple different teams, especially a team like the Steelers, who is going to be set with Mitch Trubisky if they can use a third rounder on this guy. I don't think anyone's going to complain. I think he could prove a lot of people wrong, but again, it is going to be on him. He has all the tools. He needs to put in the work to put it together, but that's exactly what he's done his entire career. He had one division one offer. He was the seventh string quarterback quarterback he earned it he is willing to put it in the work he is not going to have anything given to him and he does not expect it but that's what i think about carson strong let me know what you guys think make sure to like this video if you like videos like these 
Make sure to comment down below what you think about Carson Strong and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace. I literally could care less about the money if I'm a first round or a seventh round pick. One thing that I know is it doesn't matter where you get drafted. It matters what you do once you get drafted.